welcome to a very special edition of Sports Path here from the Target Center in Minneapolis. This is the site of the 2014 Minnesota State High School League's Boys Basketball Tournament, and the Tartan Titans are here playing in the tournament. We'll have highlights of that later on, but first, let's talk about hockey. After Hill Murray defeated Irondale 6 to nothing, White Bear Lake would go on to take on the North St. Paul Polars in their Section 4 AA quarterfinal. Let's take a look at the highlights. North St. Paul and White Bear Lake at the Aldridge Arena Section 4 AA quarterfinal. And it didn't take long for the White Bear Lake Bears to get on the board. Sam Anderson just 41 seconds in, put the Bears up 1-0. Jake Wallen followed that up just about two minutes later with a goal, and the Bears leading 2-0. Tommy Giller making it 3-0, six minutes and two seconds in. The White Bear Lake Bears coming out with an early lead, 3 to nothing, and it continued on. North Saint, White Bear Lake making it 4 to nothing now. North St. Paul just struggling, unable to get a goal on the board. Final score, White Bear Lake 10, North St. Paul 0. So the Bears would move on to the semifinals and play the winner of Stillwater and Tartan. The Titans and the Ponies took each other on in their section for a double-A quarterfinal at Aldridge Arena. Let's take a look at the highlights. Titans. Stillwater, the Titans, three seed, uh, Tartan the six seed. Down. This the section Bears for double-A quarterfinal. It uh, didn't take long. About halfway through the first period, Stillwater's Wyatt Stotts Hits the top shelf of the net and gives the Ponies the one nothing lead. And just a couple minutes later, Devin Cates followed it up here on a beautiful work as the Stillwater Ponies with a 2 to nothing lead in the first period. Stillwater continued on. Tyler Benson, brother of Josh Benson, the goaltender, making it 3 to nothing. What a goal this was. Now it was all Stillwater in the first period until with 41.9 seconds remaining, it was the Tartan Titans' Eric Reddy who got the Titans on the board 3-1 to one through the first 17 minutes of play. But just 53 seconds into the second period, Stillwater strike. John Heddle making it 4-1. to one. What moves here. A beautiful goal, cutting through the defense and then backhanding one in. Great work. The Stillwater Ponies 6, Tartan 3. Stillwater will move on to play the White Bear Lake Bears. So the Stillwater Ponies would take on the White Bear Lake Bears in the Section 4 AA semifinal to see who would move on to the finals to play Hill Murray. Let's take a look at the highlights. A great atmosphere down at the Lee and Rose Warner Coliseum as uh, the fans filed in. Great student section on both sides and uh, really cool atmosphere. White Bear Lake and Stillwater Faithful coming out. And uh, really, it was a heck of a hockey game here. No scoring for the first two periods, but 2.40 in to the third. The Stillwater Ponies drew first blood. Jack Manning, uh, the goal scorer there, and the Ponies were up one to nothing. White Bear Lake battling hard. Josh Benson playing an, ex uh, an excellent game. And then late in the third period, just about five minutes to go, Brady Anderson with a power play goal. Tied the game up at one. No scoring would happen through regulation, and we would go to overtime, and it was the Stillwater Ponies on a tip goal. Jackson Cates, and the Ponies would beat the White Bear Lake Bears and end the White Bear Lake season in overtime. Two to one, the final, and the Ponies would move on to the section final to take on the Hill Murray Pioneers. So that major upset set up a final between the Hill Murray Pioneers and the Stillwater Ponies, the last ever hockey game to be played at the Lee and Rose Warner Coliseum. Let's take a look at the highlights. The heavily favored Hill Murray Pioneers making their way to the ice, the Stillwater Ponies and their black jerseys would see and follow. And just five minutes into the first period, Mitch Slattery showing why Hill Murray is one of the top teams in the state as he gets on the gets the first blood and jumps into the bench. Hill Murray Pioneers happy they have the lead and it looked like perhaps the Pioneers would run away with it. But no scoring in the first period after that goal. And then just two minutes into the second period, it was Devin Cates who tied the game at one. And then about five minutes into the third period, it was Brandon Jungman who uh, a little bit of a fluke goal as he kind of floated one in. Not, not much Sam Ilgin, the goaltender for Hill Murray, could do about that one. It was just kind of a weird 
goal as it kind of just fluttered over one of the weirdest goals I think uh, at least I've ever seen in uh, hockey and there's still water ponies who would win this game two to one and they would beat the the Hill Murray Pioneers the number one seed in the section and uh, what a job by the Stillwater Ponies. Matt Doman, the first year head coach replacing Phil Housley, who went down to the Nashville Predators organization where he's an assistant coach there. An unbelievable upset, one of the uh, biggest in the Coliseum's history. And uh, what, a, what a way to go, or have the last year of the Coliseum go out as uh, another big upset, arguably bigger than the uh, upset in 2011 with White Bear Lake and Hill Murray, in which White Bear Lake defeated Number one, one number one ranked team in the state, Hill Murray. This was, I believe, arguably but bigger. Really what a job by the Stillwater like Ponies and uh, defeating the, the, the Hill Murray Pioneers, the and they Lee booked Rose their trip Coliseum. to the XL Energy again, Center the week Hill after Murray this fans. game. And uh, what a job by the Stillwater but Ponies. We talked to Josh Benson and I mean, head coach Matt Dillman and uh, asked caliber. them what their thoughts on this amazing victory. We will hear their words in just moments. Here with uh, head coach Matt Dolman. Matt, what went right for you guys tonight? You have a big victory. What you, what what made the difference tonight? Uh, you know, I think we were relentless. You know, after the first few minutes of the first period, you know, to kind of get our legs underneath us. Um, you know, we the boys did what, what they had to do. They played good defensively. Um, they they finished their checks. They advanced pucks forward, and you know, we got a little lucky. You frustrated White Bear Lakes offense. Cut kept, kept the puck to the outside. Uh, and whenever they had an opportunity, it was always thrown it right away. Similar situation with Hill Murray. Uh, what was the game plan heading into this, and was it the same kind of with White Bear Lake? Yeah, it really was the same. The same way we have to play. And you know, as much as we'd like to make adjustments to the teams that we're playing, we just need to focus on what we do and, and do what we do well. Talk about your goaltender, Josh Benson. Unbelievable game. Made that game-saving save at the, the third period. Uh, he's been fantastic for us. You know, I think the White Bear game, he made big saves. He made big saves tonight. Uh, he's, a, he's been a rock for sure. Congratulations, Coach. Good luck at State. Thank you. Here with Stillwater goalie, Josh Benson. Uh, Josh, you, you shocked a lot of people tonight. How does it feel? Feels unbelievable. Just great feeling. Whole team's just so excited. It's, it's unbelievable. What was, uh, what was the key to victory tonight that you saw? Uh, working hard, blocking shots, playing D. And when we play D, it just it helps our whole whole game go forward and plays offense with the D. You made a game-saving save at the end of the third period. What was that like? It was unbelievable hearing the crowd roar and just just making the save was un unreal. <laughs> this you won the last ever hockey game that will be played here at the uh, State Fair Coliseum. Uh, what was it like playing in this building and that atmosphere that it provides? It was unbelievable. I mean, I haven't played here before. Great feeling, winning the game here. Just leaving this rink with a Stillwater W going to state. And finally, one more question. I'm going to be honest with you here. Not many people picked the ponies tonight. What was their thoughts going into this game the last few days? Uh, well, we just we thought we could do it. We, we believed that we could win this game and go to state this year. This is our team. This is your team. And your head coach, Matt Doman? He, he, he was all with us, boys. Oh, he was there just the whole time, pushing us through it all year long. Great game. An unbelievable victory for the Stillwater Ponies. One final upset at the Warner Coliseum that was known for so many colossal upsets, and it's time. Let's take a look at the Section 4 AA bracket and how it uh, turned out. And you see in the quarterfinals, the Hill Murray Pioneers over Irondale, White Bear Lake over North St. Paul. We saw those highlights uh, earlier. In the semifinals, that major upset in the bottom of the bracket, Stillwater over White Bear Lake. And uh, the dream team of the Stillwater Ponies He's the first year under head coach Matt Dolman after former head coach Phil Housley moved on to the Nashville Predators. The Ponies are the Section 4 AA champions, and they would move on to the state tournament for the first time in their history. Now over to Section 4A. The Monomedi Zephyrs took on the Achiever Academy Aces at Eldridge Arena in their Section 4A quarterfinal. Let's take a look at the highlights. 
Obviously, a great season for the Monomini Zephyrs, and it would go into the postseason hoping for some success, but the Achiever Academy Aces would score first here as it was Max Stevens 11 minutes into the first period putting the Aces up 1-0, and that's how the first period would end. The Montemunite Zephyrs came surging back here. Kellen Campbell short-handed with a goal here about uh, 8 minutes and 28 seconds in. Beautiful moves. Nice little toe drag and getting into the goal. Great work. Monty and I, time game at one, and uh, they would get the Tanner lead here. Tanner Morales Tanner with a goal 15 24 into the second period. The Zephyrs leading 3 to 1, and this is when Jack Gunderson puts this one away, making it 4 to 1 at Zephyrs. And uh, they just kind of ran away with this one, especially in the third period. And 11 57 in, it's Kellen Campbell putting his second goal of the game in, and the Zephyrs would win this one six to one over Achiever Academy, move on to the section semifinals. Let's take a look at the section for a bracket to see what, how it turned out for the Montemini Zephyrs. As you see there, the quarterfinal victory over the Achiever Academy Aces. They'd move on to the semifinals where they'd win another game. And that would set up a final between the Totino Gray Seagulls and the Montemini Zephyrs. The Zephyrs had a, a lead late in the third period, but the Eagles came back, tied it up, and the Eagles ended up winning in overtime. A heartbreaker for the Montemini Zephyrs, but overall a great season. Congratulations to them and the Totina Grace Eagles would represent section four in the Class A Boys Hockey Tournament. So congratulations to the Zephyrs as we switch gears now and talk about the Tartan Titans wrestling team. The Titans had a fantastic season knocking out tough contenders in sections such as Woodbury. Let's take a look at how they did down at the Excel Energy Center in the state wrestling tournament back a couple weeks ago. A great atmosphere at the Exxon Energy Center in St. Paul. The upper deck beginning to fill as well as those fans certainly pack it in. It was Prior Lake and Tartan in the Class 3A wrestling quarterfinal. And the uh, Titans certainly fought strong here. It was uh, a battle until the very end. You see some great, uh, great form here, some great wins by the Titans. They certainly... Uh, had their opportunities, but playing Prior Lake, certainly one of the better uh, teams uh, in the, uh, the the state of Minnesota, the better wrestling teams. Number three seed uh, from Section 2, uh, just a very tough team to beat. Prior Lake continuing on there, but Carton certainly showing some great form and certainly getting their wins. And a uh, few, uh, few opportunities, but it was uh, just great emotion from uh, both sides there. As you could certainly tell, the Tartan Titans want a great grab there on the finger as uh, that, that probably doesn't feel too good, but uh, I guess no pain, no gain. And especially in wrestling, uh, it certainly isn't the most comfortable sport, if you will. Prior Lake would win this one, move on to the semis, and actually all the way to the finals before falling to Apple Valley in the finals. Great effort and a great season by the Tartan Titans. When we come back, we'll have basketball highlights. White Bear Lake girls basketball had a fantastic regular season winning the Suburban East Conference. They started their sections last week. We'll show you how they did there. And we have more from the Target Center in Minneapolis, a very special edition of Sports Bath here on TV19 Sports. It is time to kick off the winter sports season here on TV19 Sports. on TV 19. 
Here we go, White Bear Lake in Stillwater. Welcome back to Sports Path, everyone. I'm Zach Halverson, and the White Bear Lake Bears in the section semifinals taking on the Ponies, and the uh, great work there of uh, Jordan Foley uh, getting some points on the board now, kind of a jump ball here. He's got pretty aggressive, and uh, here's a beautiful job there by uh, Allison Hink, uh, and continuing on, the Bears getting on the board here, great work by Rachel Lauer. A three put on, and uh, Hank doing some great work as well. And uh, the Ponies battling back, but they couldn't do so. And the White Bear Lake Bears would win this one and head to the finals. Congratulations to White Bear Lake girls basketball team. They will move on to the section finals to take on St. Paul Central Thursday, March 13th at 7.30 at East Ridge High School. Get down there if you can. It will be one heck of a basketball game. Well, let's take a look at how that section 4 4 bracket went about. And you see White Bear Lake early on taking down North St. Paul. Stillwater took down Tartan in the quarterfinals. And then down there, Monomy and I have the seventh seed falling to the number two seed, Roseville. And that set up those semifinals here. White Bear Lake over Stillwater, 52 to 45. On the other side, number three seed Central taking down number two seed Roseville, 68 to 50. And that set up this final, White Bear Lake and Central at 7 o'clock on March 13th at Eastridge High School. Get down there if you can. Now, Hill Murray in the section 4 3 8 bracket. It wasn't uh, not, not a bad year for the Hill Murray Pioneers in the regular season. Finished 17 and 9, as you see there, taking on Highland Park. Moving on to the semifinals, they would take on a very tough Simley team with a 20 and 7 record and a 64 to 52 score was that one. Simley would move on to the section finals and Simley and New Prague in the section final that will be played on March 14th at 7 o'clock at Washington High School. So tough uh, semifinal for the Hill Murray Pioneers. Overall a great season and uh, congratulations to the Hill Murray Pioneers on a fantastic season. Now over to boys basketball, the Tartan Titans making it to the state tournament in class 4A. Let's take a look at how that section 4 4A bracket went about. As you see the Titans there on top, moving forward and having a heck of a season. And number three, at the number three state, they took down White Bear Lake, would move on to play Moundsview. And that score, 75 to 65, absolutely dominated Moundsview in that game. And then the number one seed, Woodbury, making it to the section final. Woodbury and Tartan. Section final. The Woodbury Royals certainly favored here. They're the number one seed. And uh, they showed it off the bat, but the Tartan Titans played along with them. Brody Jackson. And then a nice shot by Thomas Hansen for three. And the Tartan Titans certainly turned the tides and were starting to play very well. Nice work again by Brody Jackson. And then on the other side, Woodbury getting their shots in. Nice work here. And then Jordan Horn with a three, making it uh, a Tartan lead once again. Horn obviously enthused, and why wouldn't he be? Here's a nice shot put in by Nick Yan. And at the half, it was 45 to 35. The Tartan Titans leading by 10. They continued on here. Nice work by Brody Jackson once again. Now driving to the basket, it's Horn. And Horn getting a couple there. And another great pass play here. Move out, and then a three-point shot is successful for Thomas Hansen. And then a nice long pass, caught kind of like a football, and a nice spin. Jordan Horn drawing the foul and getting two points along with that. Great work by the Tartan Titans the entire game, and a beautiful dunk towards the end. Nice work there by Isaiah Cotton getting some momentum on the Woodbury Royals side. A nice layup put in by Nick Yan for the Woodbury Royals uh, with two. 32 to go in the second half, but the Tartan Titans held on to the lead late in the second half. A beautiful three put on and in by Jacob Lyle. And another three put on by Eric Winter, and the Tartan Titans would win this one in the section final and book their ticket to the Target Center in Minneapolis for the Class 4A State Tournament. Titan 
Bears would take down the Woodbury Royals for a trip to the state tournament. And now we take a look at that state bracket here in Class 4A, and you see Tartan Titans, a tough draw for them, having to take on the number one seed Hopkins right off the bat at 10 a.m. here at uh, the Target Center. Shaka Bianasio down there in the quarterfinals. The winner of Tartan and Hopkins will play those two teams, Buffalo and Lakeville North, and then St. Francis and Creighton Durham Hall. So a star-studded state tournament here at the Target Center for Class 4A. A heck of a uh, season by the Tartan Titans making it all the way here. Congratulations to the Titans and good luck in the state tournament as uh, they will move on and play a very tough Hopkins team. Here we go, the Tartan Titans and the Hopkins Royals at the Target Center. It was a battle of a couple of blue teams once again. I don't know why Tartan Titans with uh, Woodbury as well having to play uh, some blue teams there, their, their own colors, but uh, nonetheless, the Titans uh, making some shots early here and uh, doing some damage. Nice three put on and uh, by the play of Jordan Horn. The Titans continued on, but the Hopkins Royals, they're the number one seed, and they're the number one seed for a reason, as uh, they were making shots after shot. The Titans certainly stuck around here, but you can clearly see that the uh, Hopkins Royals were uh, you know, clearly a talented team. A three-pointer from NBA range. What work there by Jordan Horn, and the Tartan Titans certainly showed plenty of promise here, and uh, stuck around and gave Hopkins uh, certain worry. Here's a nice work here, driving down and getting the layup for John Jenkins. And the uh, Titans certainly showed up plenty of talent here. It's a great work on the offensive side, but uh, the Hopkins Royals offense just overpowered the Tartan defense uh, throughout the game. But uh, still more points here. Great layup put on by Horn, and another nice shot put in there by the hands of Cole Adamson. And uh, you can see the Tartan Titans students very, very happy. And another layup there by Emmanuel Humphrey. And uh, plenty of uh, atmosphere here. So there's plenty of uh, talent from uh, all, all sides here. Another shot, and that is put in by Jordan Horn for the Tartan Titans. Nice three put in by Eric Winter. Eric Winter had a pretty good game as well. And on the other side, a dunk to pretty much seal the deal. The Hopkins Royals would win this game 70 to 58, and they will move on in the Class 4A basketball, boys basketball quarter, uh, semifinals, and uh, with hopes for a so, state championship. A great, great tournament season here at TV19. It continues on. Next show, we'll talk about the girls basketball state tournament. Hopefully, we'll have a team in there as those sections are lining up. Good luck to the White Bear Lake Bears in their section final as uh, they're hoping to play here at the Target Center next week. We'll see if they can do it. Be sure to get out there. For information on all of our programming, visit our website, onlocationtv.org. Visit our Facebook pages, facebook.com slash tv19sports, twitter.com slash tv19sports, as well as if you are interested in volunteering here at TV19, give Arlen Becker a call, 651-747-3822. That's 651-747-3822. Or give him an email at Arlen and onlocationtv.org. And if you're looking to perhaps be a sports host, announcer, anything on air talent-wise for sports, let us know. Give Nick Anderson a call, 651-747-3821. That's 651-747-3821. Or email him at nicholas at onlocationtv.org. For Adam Porn, Nick Anderson, and the rest of the Sports Path crew here at the Target Center, thanks for joining us on a very special edition of Sports Path. Be sure to tune in in a couple weeks. We'll wrap up all the tournament coverage here, including girls basketball. I'm Zach Halverson. So long. Thanks for tuning in. This has been Sports Path on TV 19 Sports.